This is the sun, and we're gonna make it 10 times as hot. Okay, 10 times hotter. Let's check out how this affects the earth. Oh, all of the vegetation is dead already. Just from that in just like a couple months. This suggestion came from Edgar from Earth in the comment section of my last video. And today we're going to go through a ton more comments that you guys suggested. All right, so it looks like 10 times hotter will kill all the vegetation, but not much else. Let's see how it affects the life likelihood. You can see it's dropping. The oceans here are over 200 degrees Celsius on the equator now. So you can see Antarctica, all of the ice is gone. And oh, it looks like there's a little bit of vegetation here. Greenland is no longer white. It is now brown. Okay, that's not enough. We need the sun even hotter. Okay, luminosity. 1,000 times the sun. This has got to do something, right? Okay, I'm going to play time. We're going to focus on the earth. And then we're going to play time in three, two, one, go. Ah, immediately it's all engulfed in flames. We killed everything. Oh, life likelihood. Oh, it just dropped to zero. Aviation Corner says, could you make the sun 1800 times bigger than it is now and collide it with two Stevenson 218s? Okay, so the sun, pause it. So we want it 1800 times bigger. 1800, right? Oh, that made it go supernova. That's not very good. Oh, my whole game froze. Yes, okay, I got it to work, I think. 1800 times the radius and I don't even know the mass is very big. Let's play time. Oh, it froze. That's not very good. Is it? No, it's supernova again. That's it. I'm just throwing Stevenson 218 right at it. Launch it through the solar system. Okay. I mean, I kind of launched it past it. Oh, it dragged everything in still. Okay. Uh, Stevenson 218 go at Stevenson 218 plus another one on the other side. <laughs> So if you don't know, Stevenson 218 is actually the biggest star that we have ever discovered. Oh, oh, they're dancing. Okay, something happened. I guess it's supernova. Giant explosion. Oh, they're just flying away from each other now. All right, we got a suggestion that says it would be cool to see the biggest planet orbit the smallest star. Okay, let's open a new simulation for this one. Okay, HD 100546B is the biggest planet we have ever found and you can see it's 17.5 times the mass of jupiter so now let's make this planet orbit the smallest star okay so they don't actually have the smallest star in the game um but it says it's smaller than saturn so let's just make a star and make it smaller than saturn so here's proxima centauri which is already a fairly small star and we'll just like shrink it okay we need saturn for comparison okay that's smaller than saturn that counts okay so there's proxima centauri these about the same size as the smallest known star and then now let's get hd 100 546b boom okay so this is the biggest planet orbiting the smallest star that's what it looks like um they're kind of pulling each other and it looks like it's getting really hot probably just because hd 100 546b is super big already uh let's zero the velocity and just have them collide Oh, boom. Okay, Supernova. HD 100546B survived and Proxima Centauri actually died. That's funny. Pokeholic says, would be cool to see a binary black hole system. All right, let's try to make a binary black hole system. Okay, so this black hole has the same amount of mass as the sun, even though it's going to be a lot smaller than the sun. Let's turn on. Okay, I turned on a green background so you can see it better. There is a black hole that has the same mass as the sun. So let's get it in a binary orbit now with another black hole about the same size as the sun. Okay, they're going. We'll create a bear center. So they're both orbiting around this point. So you can see it's working. So there's two black holes orbiting each other. So now we should be able to put a planet out here. Let's put Jupiter. Um, about this far, I guess. And let's speed up time and see if Jupiter will be able to orbit safely. Yeah, it looks like it. So the entire system's moving, so that's why you get this like trail, but you can see that Jupiter does seem to be pretty stable. So now let's give Jupiter a moon and make it habitable with tidal heating. So with realistic lighting, it is super dark out here, um, but let's give it a random moon and put it fairly close. I'm gonna turn on the flashlight just so we can see what we're working with. Oh, this already looks like it could be habitable. Let's check its temperature. Okay, it's cooling down, so we need it to be closer. How's that? And then auto orbit. Okay, we may need the mass a little bit bigger. All right, here we go. This moon should be habitable. 8.5% habitability. Um, slowly going up over time. So it should, it should work okay. So yeah, there's a binary black hole system. 
Pretty cool. Hey, Chip, can you make a random blue star collide with Stevenson 218? I want to see the damage that it does. Yes. Let's go to a new simulation. Okay, so a random blue star. We'll just do random known star until we get a blue one. That's not blue. Okay, I got a blue one. HD 62317. This is a blue star. And we're going to collide it now with Stevenson 218. Oh, boy. It's a small blue star, it looks like. Here's this. Here's Stevenson 218 compared to it. Uh, go. We'll follow the blue star into Stevenson 218. Here it goes. Boom. Okay, that was not very exciting. Okay, I think we need a bigger blue star. So here's a blue star in the menu, and we're, we, we want it bigger. Oh, I made it into a black hole. Oh, and it ate Stevenson 218. I call that a victory. Could you change the black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy? Let's try. Okay, so here's the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, let's see if we can focus just on Sagittarius A. Yes, okay. So now we can focus on the black hole in the middle. So let's try to make it more massive and see if it'll eat the entire galaxy. So let's spin it up fast enough that we can see the galaxy spinning. So that's gonna be like millions of years per second. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you can see it's moving. Um, and let's just start turning up the mass of the black hole and see what happens. Okay, it's growing right now. Growing, growing, growing. Oh, it's working. It's eating stuff. Okay, it's like eating everything in the middle. Keep going. Suck more. It's like condensing the whole galaxy into a smaller galaxy. Bigger. Oh, it's starting to shoot stuff out. We're like giving it an accretion disk. And I made it. Okay, the entire galaxy like disappeared. So either everything got sucked up or shot back out into space. Could you do dark sun? It would be so cool. Okay, so let's make the sun dark. Luminosity zero okay well it still looks like the sun even though it's not giving off any light so we need to change the visuals boom that is a dark sun it looks like a black hole now okay let's see if this actually makes it dark is the earth freezing over oh look it is there's no light over here it's so weird though because it thinks that there should be so there's no city lights on this side whoa interesting oh yeah look the whole earth is freezing over let's speed up time and see how long it takes and after a few years, yep, the entire Earth turns into a big ball of ice. But the sun is still here and it's dark. A dark sun. It's like a black hole. Pretty cool. Hot App says you should invert all the planets like Neptune being the closest. Okay, so we want Neptune first, then Uranus, then Saturn, then Jupiter, then Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury in that order. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, it's done. Okay, so let's play time and see what happens. Okay, Neptune is the closest. No way this just works. Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury. Okay, so I'm sure Earth is gonna freeze over. Yes, for sure. And it's darker out here. You don't get as much light. What about Neptune? Neptune's probably like burning hot now. Um, it's heating up. Uranus heating up too. So I think we need to run the simulation for a while. I'm just gonna speed it up really fast and then we'll check on it. Okay, it's been a few hundred years, so now let's check out Neptune. Um, it's warm, 140 degrees Celsius. It looks like it's stabilized there. Saturn, looking good. So the solar system looks like it would be stable like this. It is kind of- oh, something happened to Uranus. Uranus is in a very elliptical orbit. I guess the combined gravity of these gas giants so close together shot it out. So Uranus is now in a very, very elliptical orbit. Um, but it looks like these outer planets are so small that they would have no effect on each other at all. So that's what would happen if the planets were inverted. Combine the Milky Way with a random galaxy that's 10 times bigger than it. Let's do it. Okay, Milky Way, go. And then we'll do random spiral galaxy here. That already looks a lot bigger. Okay, radius, 10 times the size of our galaxy. Okay, so that's Milky Way versus a galaxy 10 times as big. It looks more than 10 times, but let's just play and see what happens. We're going to need a lot of uh, time warp here. Okay, things are starting to move. Here we go. Milky Way. Here it goes. It's being pulled. Oh, oh, Milky Way is disintegrating. Oh, the whole Milky Way just got eaten, basically. Okay, wait. Is this the Milky Way? Yeah, this is the Milky Way's black hole. So it still look. It did disrupt the big galaxy, even though. Okay, the black holes are in orbit of each other now in a binary orbit and as they orbit each other it completely shreds the combined galaxy now shooting stuff off into space wow okay so this is fast as i can run it so i'm just gonna run it for a little bit and then see what happens so it looks like it's just shredding the black holes over time um and i guess they'll clump back together and sort of form a cohesive galaxy that's really cool 
Maybe try the smallest black hole next to Earth and see what would happen. All right, so here's Earth. We can really make a black hole as small as we want. Let's try to make a black hole that is one centimeter big. So, you know, that big. So I'm actually gonna take the Earth, we're gonna make it paused, put the Earth right here, and then turn this Earth into a black hole. Drink down. So here's the Earth now. The mass is not changed. So this and that Earth there have the same exact mass. So we want this radius to be one centimeter. Okay, that's eight centimeters. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, one centimeter. So that means that it needs to be even more massive to turn into a black hole. We're gonna lock the mass. Okay, there we go. Tiny black hole, only one centimeter big. So let's actually put a human scale object next to it so you can see. Here's a soccer ball next to our black hole. So you can see that our black hole is very small and we're just gonna play time and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna speed up time a little bit. Um, it looks like, okay, I'm zeroing the velocity of the Earth. Okay, here we go. They're getting pulled towards each other. Um, oh, it's pulling giant chunks off the Earth before it gets there and sucking up these giant rocks. Okay, after it eats all of those, how big is it now? 1.14 centimeters, so it's bigger now, but not by a lot. It's about to hit the surface. Oh, and it just instantly ate the whole thing. And now it is two centimeters big. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave more suggestions for things to do in Universe Sandbox in the comments below. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you next time.